From our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, staff have battled through one of their busiest days at the Hobart Airport with a record number of flights. Passengers flooded in with minimal delays in what is a welcome boost for the state's travel industry. Heaving with holiday makers, arrival gates came alive with travellers eager to explore the Apple Isle. Coming to Hobart for a holiday, Dad's doing a little bit of work with the Tasmanian Tigers cricket team, so we're tagging along, extending a little bit and have a bit of fun. First time it's been on time for a long time as well, so it was, uh, it was easy, it was hardly any delays, it was great. From Adelaide? Yeah, I'm just having a holiday. Um, off the back of the 30th and a bit of a baby moon as well. Not as busy as I thought, it only took an hour to get through, so it wasn't too bad. While it was a smooth process for the majority of passengers, it wasn't without delays for some. We got changed half an hour before, we were supposed to go via Adelaide, and then we got shuffled by Melbourne for a three hour delay there. Easter Monday marked a historic milestone for the Hobart Airport, the runway welcoming its largest number of planes. We've got 81 movements or flight movements, basically means that um, we've got 41 uh, inbound and 40 outbound, pretty frequent throughout the day. Encouraged by a low number of cancellations, baggage collection was kept under order. Unlike uh, some of the experiences on, on mainland in Sydney and Melbourne, We've been able to maintain around 90% of staff levels throughout the uh, COVID period. Staff have spent weeks preparing for the busy Easter rush, looking to avoid the chaos experienced in mainland airports with flights arriving every 10 minutes on the tarmac here in Hobart. Well, it's certainly every shoulder to the wheel to ensure that uh, we move the passengers inbound, then process the, the outbound passengers as quickly as we possibly can. Launceston Airport workers were also run off their feet, facilitating a number of travellers who were awaiting special reunions. I'm going to see my family. haven't seen them, haven't met my nephews and nieces, so family time. To visit my daughter who's having uh, my first grandchild. <laughs> The industry hopeful the influx is a sign of things to come. It's great to see passengers in the terminal. Uh, we're hope, hopeful that this is the start of, um, of a very good year. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. COVID case numbers have seen a slight jump overnight across Tasmania. 1,372 new infections were recorded. 44 people remain in hospital with the virus, while one person is receiving treatment in intensive care. Federal Labor has slammed the Coalition's performance on Tasmania's health system. It says commitments made at the last federal election are yet to be delivered three years on. The opening line of his media statement last federal election was they'll be working to keep waiting lists for elective surgery down. We now know that more than 10,000 Tasmanians are waiting for elective surgery today. Meanwhile, the Liberals are spruiking the local benefits of their $273 million pledge to cut the cost of glucose monitoring technology for diabetes sufferers. This is part sufferers. of my local plan for Lions, so part of that is around um, ac better access to GPs and health services. The party claims it will save patients thousands of dollars a year. The Greens have renewed their calls to ban greyhound racing in Tasmania. They've released new data showing around four dogs a month have been seriously injured in 2022. But the state government says the sport is getting safer each year. From a hot lap to a happy home, these perchers are enjoying their retirement. This group are among a number of greyhounds rehabilitated for Tasmanian families to love. They're a great height, for example, in an aged care setting because elderly people can reach them, can touch them and they're very uh, placid. But the Greens say not all are getting a second life. On average, four dogs a month are being catastrophically injured on the track. They claim stewards report data collected from each meeting this year shows 17 dogs have been seriously injured across the state. Of those, two have been euthanised, including one in this Devonport race and one at Hobart. They were just over two years of age. They're just... They're just big puppies and um, a lot of these dogs don't live the term of their natural life. It's appalling. The more people that um, know about this, the more um, negative reaction there's going to be. In a statement, Racing Minister Madeleine Ogilvie says more money is being invested into greyhound welfare than ever before, with the issue also a part of the review into the Racing Regulation Act. She also says fatalities have dropped from 18 in 2018-2019 to just seven last financial year.
In the short term, the Greens believe racing should be conducted on straight tracks. Long term, however, they want the sport scratched. You'd also need for there to be dignity in exit uh, by compensating people who are currently participants. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Opponents of a proposed visitor centre and car park at Freycinet National Park have come out in force. Protesters formed a human chain on the Coles Bay site where the $300 million project is slated to be built. They say local habitat will come under threat if the development goes ahead. The visitor gateway will include 200 car parks and room for buses and RVs. Let's take a look now at the Crips TSL Player of the Year votes after round four. And we begin with the game at Windsor Park. Joby Harper, best on ground for the Blues in the triple figure win over North Launceston. Colin Garland's five goal hole sees him claim full points for Clarence against Lauderdale. And Kingborough's Lockie Clifford is on the board. Three votes in the match against North Hobart. And taking a look at the leaderboard, Joby Harper is out in front on six, Colin Garland on five, and Brodie Pafferman and Michael Stingle are tied on four. John Aloisi says Tasmania's vocal locals help supercharge Western United's six-goal route at Utah Stadium. The team's next test is against MacArthur FC tomorrow night, where two Swiss stars will look to keep their winning form. As Western United makes Tasmania a home away from home... And there's 3-0 now, Western United. ..the side's Swiss signing spelt right at home at Grindelwald. It's a surprise. Uh, I didn't know that in Tasmania there is a Swiss village. Perth Glory certainly knew about Alexander Priovic. His penalty produced goal number five for United on Saturday night. The journeyman has played in 14 countries over his career, but says A-League is among the toughest of them all. It's definitely a physical league physically demanding, a lot of running, a lot of uh, contact. Also making contact, Leo Lacra. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the defender's in his first season at the club after moving from Switzerland as well. And also for my kids, you know, it's a gift we, we did uh, uh, with my wife to learn English, to, to see uh, something else. Western United is now undefeated from four outings in the Apple Isle. Saturday's crowd of 2,200 was more than triple the number which saw United play Perth here back in February. We were impressed with the crowd. They, they made a lot of noise and uh, they really supported us and, and, and it helps the players. MacArthur FC awaits tomorrow night a team plagued by defensive problems. The side's now conceded goals in ten matches straight. We don't just keep possession for possession's sake. We, when we... Uh, got possession, we want to uh, play through the lines quickly and, uh, and try and get forward as quick as possible. An approach which could spell another goal fest at Utahs. South Hobart is through to the quarterfinals of the Laco Siljak Cup after a 3-0 win over Taruna. A well-worked free kick opened their account in the 13th minute before doubling their lead via another set piece. The result sealed just after half time thanks to some fancy footwork. Slick stuff, squares it up and buried by Morton 3-0. And South Hobart might have wrapped this one up early in the second half. Taruna had better luck in the women's statewide cup defeating University. A goal of the year contender among their highlights. Aiton with an ambitious effort. Holly Aiton! 1-1, one, one, what a goal! She chips the keeper from 30 yards out. Taruna eventually winning 4-2. It's regarded as one of the toughest cycling races on the planet, something Cameron Worth found out the hard way. The Tasmanian was leading the peloton early on in France's Paris-Roubaix, also known as the Hell of the North, before coming unstuck on a cobblestone section. It's Cameron Worth. And look, he's ridden so well today, but again, it's very challenging if a rider crashes in front of you, you're going to go down. Worth had been supporting his Ineos Grenadiers teammate Dylan Van Bala, who went on to win the coveted Cobblestone Trophy. And Tasmanian Jacob Despard has taken out the Backmarkers Invitational at the Stall Gift. Running in the green, the 2018 champion edged out fellow Tasmanian Jack Hale. Despard and Rizzo in the middle. They come down towards the line. Despard it is, I reckon, who's going to get there, and he does. I've run in this Backmarkers a few times now. Come second once, and to win it, no, it means a lot to me. Harrison Kerr won the men's gift with the fastest time in 27 years. While Hobart's Lucy Carter finished fifth in the women's gift final, the outmarker started cleanly and led for most of the race before being swamped in the final metres. Queensland's Carla Ball was the winner. Good evening. Hobart reached 16 degrees today and 19 in Launceston, Burnie and Devonport. 
18 in Bushy Park, Friendly Beach is 15 and a top of 12 at Liawini. The satellite pictures show a high level of cloud moving south eastward over Tasmania with mid to low level cloud about the southwest as the high cloud cleared. While a band of high level cloud is moving over Tasmania, Victoria and South Australia with another level of high level of cloud crossing over central Western Australia while mid to low level cloud is sitting over southwest WA and coastal parts of New South Wales and Queensland. Tomorrow's chart sees a trough over the northeast of the state, extending from a low pressure system over New South Wales, while a cold front and a prefrontal trough is heading our way in the evening. Southwest to northwesterly winds of 10 to 20 knots about the west and south, with winds increasing to 15 to 25 knots in the evening, reaching 30 knots in the southwest, and southwesterly winds of 3 to 3.5 metres in the west and south and a strong wind warning is in place for the southwest coast. Cloudy in Hobart tomorrow, Adventure Bay 16 and a top of 14 in Taralea. Launceston 19, a morning shower or two in Devonport and showers in 18 in Bridport. A morning shower or two in Burnie, Strawn 17 and partly cloudy in Marawar. St Helens 18, showers and 17 in Swansea and 19 degrees in Whitemark. Showers about the west, far south and central areas on Wednesday, mainly fine elsewhere. Thursday, showers about the west, south and central areas of the state, clearing in the afternoon, 17 in Launceston, Hobart 15. And Friday, some areas of morning frost, otherwise fine apart from light showers about the west. Mostly sunny conditions in Brisbane tomorrow, Sydney 27, partly cloudy in Adelaide and a top of 38 degrees in Broome. And right now in Hobart, it's cloudy in 13, Launceston also cloudy and 15 and Devonport 15 as well. That's all for me tonight, Kim. And that is all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.